Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode I'd like to talk to you about placeholder settings, what they are and how to use them. So let's start with first looking at the type of editing interfaces we have in Sitecore. First, let's look at the content editor. So this is what I have open here, and we're already familiar with it. It's a uh, the main content editing tool that Sitecore provides, the most comprehensive content editing tool. And this is what's usually used by advanced content authors, uh, perhaps designers, content authoring, marketing folks, uh, maybe even system administrators. Right now, the second content authoring tool is what's called experience editor. It used to be called page editor. Now this is a WYSIWYG tool. This provides you immediate feedback about the content changes you're making as you're making them on the page. Simply point and click and start making making changes. Right? Simply save and you're good to go. Now the difference between two is primarily the feature set. Like I said the content editor is used primarily by more advanced users, while the experience editor is used primarily for simple content authoring edits. Now, one caveat about the uh, page editor or the experience editor is that in order to be able to add components on this page, you have to have placeholder settings configured. Now, this is what I'm talking about. To add a component in the experience editor, what you would need to do is click the component button right here in the top left corner. Now what you'll notice right after I clicked it, I got these indicators, these, these visual cues as to where I can place additional components. So I can place one above the main content area or below the main content area. Now this is exactly the job of the placeholders. So content placeholders or placeholder settings uh, allow us to define what components are allowed where on the page. If we didn't have any placeholders defined when we click the component button, we would not get any visual cues here. And all we would be able to do is to simply delete components. We wouldn't be able to add anything. And that is a serious limitation that cripples your content editor, or I'm sorry, the experience editor experience, making users having to switch to the content editor. In fact, what I find very frequently in Cycro implementations is that content uh, experience editor uh, experience is unfortunately very limited. A lot of vendors don't support full uh, website editing capabilities uh, of their web pages, which sort of forces content authors to either use the content editor for some edits and then the experience editor for others, or just simply forget about the experience editor, wasting all the time and effort that was put into making con uh, components editable in experience uh, editor and just simply switching to the content editor. And uh, perhaps the most disappointing part about uh, developing for experience editor is that if you miss one little thing, one small feature, uh, from if you miss it uh, and not make it editable in the experience editor, if content authors have to switch to the content editor for that just one little tiny bit, even though you've covered 99.99% .99 of features and made them editable and expose them through the experience editor, if they just have to go to the content editor for that just one thing, eventually they'll stop using the experience editor. So that's why, why it's important to do proper discovery to understand the content editing uh, capabilities that the experience editor has to have to make it easy on your content authors and allow them to use the experience editor. Now, getting a little sidetracked here. So let's get back to placeholder settings. So again, placeholder settings allow us to define what components can go where. Placeholder settings aren't needed for the content editor. As you can see, we can simply go to the presentation layer details and start modifying our controls here. So how do we define the placeholder settings? Well, they are located under the system node. Let's minimize this. Oh, I'm sorry, system node under the layout placeholder settings. By default, Cycro comes with a couple, content and web edit. So let's take a look at the content. So the basic structure of the placeholder setting item, let's turn off the standard fields to make it easier is we define the placeholder key, 
this is the placeholder key that the placeholder refers to or uh, that it configures um, components for. The list of allowed components, of course, right below it, a description, and whether it's editable or not. All right. Now, we can define placeholder settings globally, which means once I've created this placeholder setting item and put content placeholder key here, um, this placeholder setting will apply to all of the placeholders on all of the websites in this content tree on this site, for instance, um, across the line. So this is a global placeholder. This will apply to all of the content placeholders um, on all of the items on this site, for instance. Now, another way to define a placeholder setting is to define it specifically on the item. And you can do that by either creating a placeholder here first or simply reusing one of the placeholder uh, settings here. So you, uh, you, how you do that is by going to the presentation details, edit your presentation details for the device of choice and notice the last tab in the uh, presentation layer detail editor is the placeholder settings. Now here you can click, uh, simply click add and choose the placeholder you'd like to add. Then define the placeholder setting here. Now, many might ask, well, why would we need a separate placeholder key here from what we have on the placeholder, uh, placeholder setting item there? Well, this is, this is the placeholder key that's specific for this particular item, right? Remember the uh, uh, content um, and the web edit placeholder settings? Those were global placeholder settings. What you may run into is um, perhaps specifying um, the same components or allowing the same components on a specific item uh, for a different placeholder. And this is where that flexibility is allowed by using this place, like an extra placeholder key specific for that item. So let's hit OK, OK, and now we have that placeholder setting selected here directly on the item. Now this particular use case, what I just demonstrated, isn't very useful because we just specified the same uh, renderings for the same placeholder, uh, for the same placeholder key. So let's uh, do a couple tests. So first, I'll show you what happens when you create uh, two placeholder setting items with the same placeholder name, placeholder key, and item name. Let's define, let's call this one content again. Now, first thing you notice is over here on the left, we have a validation failure. What that's saying is, watch out, there's, a, there's another place, placeholder setting with that placeholder key already defined. We're just going to ignore this for now, add some random renderings here and save. Now, what do you think Psyker is gonna do? when it looks at which placeholder setting to apply to the content placeholder key. Well, just like with everything else, Sitecore will just simply uh, grab the first one it finds. So here, it'll grab the sample rendering. If we put the sample rendering down one step, uh, bringing our new placeholder setting up, Sitecore once the cache is cleared, and that's important, once the cache is cleared, it'll pick this guy up instead uh, for all of the content placeholder keys. Now, what we can also do, and actually let's take a look here. Let's, uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Now first, let's see, let's refresh this page, reload. So what we should see here is now a list of two renderings. There we go, instead of the sample rendering, what we have there by default um, with Sycor out of the box. Now what we can also do is let's say, let's say if we had a use case where this works fine, right? This works great. So these are the, the two placeholder, uh, the two renderings that we would like to apply to all of the content placeholders key across uh, all of the websites in the site, for instance. However, on this particular home item, what we'd like to do is define 
a different set of components for that same placeholder key. So what we'll do is we'll delete this guy. We'll add, we'll say, let's add it to the content placeholder key. Let me grab this guy. But here, notice I'm clicking uh, create new settings. So we'll give it name content, we'll create another. Well, let's actually separate that out visually. We'll call it name, placeholder, key, content, the same placeholder key notice. Uh, we'll leave the parent, placeholder settings, that's fine. Editable controls, and this time we'll just add a bunch of sub layouts just for testing purposes, right? So it's easy to tell the difference. Okay, notice the same placeholder key that was saved here. Now let's go ahead and check the experience editor and see what that looks like now. Let's go and click on component, add here, and now we have the sub layouts. So this is important to remember that local, uh, locally specified placeholder settings override the globally specified placeholder settings. Look, we have a couple here with the same content uh, placeholder key. However, the one defined specifically on the item takes precedence. So here you go. So these, uh, this is uh, uh, the meaning of the placeholder and this is how to use placeholder keys. Unfortunately, I run into solutions, agro solutions very frequently where they are not being used uh, correctly or uh, only used partially, not used at all uh, in some cases, which really cripples the experience of the ex uh, experience editor. Experience of the experience editor. Mouthful. So anyways, Hope you liked this tip. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, for more tips like this, uh, check out cmsbestpractices.com and I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.